I live in it? Do I live in it? So astounding. Love is an ocean, you can drown me. The sweet embrace, the lovely taste, I taste and see. I'm under grace, the place to be. It means I'll never need an umbrella. I'm cool in the cold, in the hot weather. Whether or never I ever understand I'm a man in the hands of great plans. I stand with faith and a life I never known to touch. And still I saw my clutch, but I'm like, what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? Live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living with the death. So what's the dream of? What's the hope in? What's the doubt for? And live to no end. This is living. The life I've been given is a gift. If I'm a living, I'm a living with the death. Yeah.
Tracy. Yes. Can February, March. What? No, but April, May. Uh, <laughs> not again. <laughs> oh, come on. May jokes are just the best. Anyway, what's going on, church kids? Welcome back to the Church Kids Show and happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Charles, why don't you kick us off with our faith declaration? Oh, okay. Take a big breath because it's real long. Okay. You got it. I have love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and a self-control. Amen! Church kids, are you trying your best to remember all of them? Don't forget what is coming up at the end of the month. <gasps> Memory verse madness! madness! And trust me, you are going to need to know the fruits of the Spirit. Not only do we need to know the fruits of the Spirit for Memory verse Madness, but it's important to remember them for our own lives. That's right. The fruit of the Spirit is in each of us. When we live with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, we are living like Christ, and that is what we are called to do. 
Before we get more into the fruit of the spirit, let's play a quick fruity game. Let's do it. Uh, okay, so. Bring me my fruit. Whoa. <laughs> There's not actually fruit oh. in this game. Okay, so for the game, we've each been sent three songs and three names of fruits. We mm -hmm. have to sing a song only using one fruit name, and I have to guess what you're singing. You have to guess what I'm singing. Okay. So if I guess your song's right, I get a point. If you guess my song's right, you get a point. Okay. Whoever gets the most points obviously loses. Just mm. kidding. They win. Okay. Okay. How do I, I'm trying to think of how do I do this. <laughs> what fruit have you been given? Watermelon. Oh, triggering. <laughs> okay. I'm going to begin. Okay. Okay. Begin. By singing watermelon. Okay. A watermelon water, a watermelon. Watermelon. Except it's usually a lot higher. A watermelon water. A this watermelon. A, a watermelon water. I have no idea what's going on. A watermelon. I have no idea. That's all I get. That's the chorus, you, I think. You sing the same two things. Oh, That's repeat. pop music for you. Oh, dang it. I give you a hint. Would you like to know? Yeah. Sunflower by Post Malone. I don't know that song. And is it Swally? Never it left is. in a dust. Oh, I've never seen that. Stuck by That's cool. Oh, like wait, that. I know that. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. This okay. one's easy. I'm ready. Grape! 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 September by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. Ready for this one? Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> banana, ba da da da. Banana, banana. This is so hard banana, for me. Banana, banana. Banana, banana, na na na, banana, banana. banana. <laughs> it's one of our worship songs. Banana, 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 na banana, 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 this is your love. No! <laughs> De real love! This yes. is real love! Yes. Oh my gosh, I was so worried for a second. This is real love. All right, <clears throat> are Next. you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Can I love? Can I love? <laughs> I just realized how much like yelling there is in this number. It must be a worship song if there's, <laughs> yeah. a, lot, if there's a lot of yelling, it's a worship song. Can I love? Can I love? Can I love? Can I love you and treat you? <laughs> let his face shine upon you and be. What is this called? Are you kidding? <laughs> can I love? Can I love? And your can I love? Family, and your children? Can and your children? May this favor be upon you for a thousand years. Can I love? Can I love? Can I love? Can I love? He is with you. He is for you. He is with you. He is with you. He is with you. Can I love? The promise? They do at some point. They do? The truth? Yeah. All right. Well, wrong. You got it wrong. The will of the Lord. You guessed too many times. What? There was not a limit on guessing. Okay, but it's at least less than seven. You just said, okay, there's no limit, but there is. And I don't know the title. It's The Blessing. <laughs> I knew it was The Something. Yeah. Strawberry, 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 <gasps> strawberry. Obviously, it's strawberry, Let It Go. Strawberry, strawberry, re, 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 strawberry. Strawberry. Stra, 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 strawberry. Stra, ba, strawberry. The cold so never bothered me strawberry. anyway. Da, dun, 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 dun. Okay. Did you, did you, we did all of them. No, I have Oh, one. your last one. Pomegranate, 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 pom oh, pomegranate, pomegranate. I'm guessing it's this from some kind of really musical. really hard. No. It's not. Movie? Yeah. Is it, it's, please tell me it's not Frozen 2. Because I didn't watch that movie. Pomegranate, oh. pomegranate, pomegranate, pomegranate. Yeah. <laughs> I really oh. Like it. I'm a great Is it Happy by Pharrell Yeah, Williams? that's really oh, hard. That's not Come from a along. movie. It is from Despicable Me 2. 
Okay. Well, what? Yay! Good job. That was that was a hard one to guess. So did you get all three? No, you won. I, I thought you guessed all three of mine. No, I didn't get your first one, remember? What was it again? Oh, Sunflower. Should we tie yeah. it? No. Oh, I missed one. Oh, yeah. We tied. I mean, a I won. I mean, I mean, like you said, <laughs> I won. Well, a tie it is. An honorable tie, <sighs> indeed. Mm. I guess. It's fine. Yeah. I don't like ties, to be honest. Anyway! I know. Tying my shoes is hard. Anyway, we're going to go check out a game. So let's see what we have in store for you today. Let's do it! What's up, Turf Kids? It's me, Teacher Jeremiah, here with another fun game that I like to call Apple Stack. All right, for this game, you are going to need six apples. To play this game, all you need to do is stack your apples six high in under 60 seconds. If you can do that, then you're a winner, winner, apple dinner. The game begins in three, two, one. But the fruit of the spirit, fruit, fruit of the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5.22, fruit of the spirit. Yeah, fruit, fruit of the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit. Fruit, fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A mango is sweet, but I think you know. Yeah. It's not the same as the spirit fruit when it grows. Oh. As the fruit of the spirit comes into our lives, a new land starts to form in front of our eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things start to bloom like a fruit on a tree, but the spirit does its work inside you and me. Yeah. Far more nutritious than an apple sliced. The fruit of the spirit is to make us more like Christ. We got love. Unconditional and freely given Joy filled is the way we should be living Peace, cooling us in times of stress and impatience For those who need it the most we bless them Kindness, reflecting off our words and actions Goodness, could this bring our faith attraction? Faithfulness to keep us hopeful through the rough times Gentleness, I must confess, this one's a tough rhyme Self-control to keep my anger in check Learning to manage it so I don't end up a wreck So you can keep your orange, your peach, your strawberry but I'm strolling with the spirit, it's the fruit that I carry Yeah, the fruit of the spirit Fruit, fruit of the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the spirit Yeah, fruit, fruit of the spirit, but the fruit of the spirit Fruit, fruit of the spirit yeah. is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control Hey Charles, do you know what my favorite fruit of the spirit is? Pomegranate? Ha, <laughs> just kidding. What is it? <laughs> it's peace. Sometimes I worry and start to feel anxious, but I have to remember that I have the peace of God in me when I start to feel that way. Hmm, that's so good. Let's watch our lesson for today and see what else we can learn from having the fruits of the spirit in us. I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And you know what really bothers me? Uh, pickles. 
yes. But also when people say, not gonna lie, or to be honest, I'm like, good, to be honest, all the time, not just some of the time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that bothers me too. We are talking all about how to be prepared for whatever life serves us, and I'm honestly ready for people to just tell the truth all the time. Practicing honesty can be difficult though. So, Ricky, what is one big or small lie that you've told recently? Okay, all honesty. Uh, mm -hmm. A friend texted me, I told them I would text them back, but I didn't. Uh, and then I, when I did text them back, I was like, oh, I, I forgot. I didn't forget. I was just really into this level of a video game. Because oh, my word. Once you hit that flow state, you know, you just don't want to break it. Apparently, he forgot I was the friend that texted him. Jamie. So I chose video games over friendship. What about you, Jamie? <laughs> What's a lie that you've told? Okay, so the other day, I had a friend tell me a joke. And uh, I said, oh, my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> It really wasn't funny. Oh. oh. So it's kind of like a white lie. Does that count? It, <laughs> it counts. counts. <laughs> like, but why do we lie? I mean, we want to be trustworthy, but sometimes lying feels like it's the easier thing to do. Mm -hmm. Being honest makes us dependable, which makes us ready for anything. Right now, let's let's see what pointers we can pick up about honesty. Well, one thing I learned. To be honest, you have to find the truth. That's not always easy. I saw Bob take something from Ben's locker, and then I saw him buy an expensive pen. It seemed he had stolen some money. But you didn't know I'd stolen it. That's right. And you didn't even give me the benefit of the doubt. No. You should have asked yourself some questions, Jim. Is it logical to think that Bob would steal? Does it jive with your past experience of the way Bob operates? Jim, your physics teacher might say that you uh, formed your hypothesis and jumped to your conclusion. You skipped that all-important part of testing your hypothesis. Sometimes it takes a lot of testing to find the truth. But now can we draw up another general principle about honesty? I'd say the next step is pretty obvious. Tell the truth. Is it that simple? No. I don't think it is simple. Luke, get this. When I was in fourth grade, my sister and I got into a massive argument. And she made me so angry that I chased her throughout the house. She ran to the bathroom, she shut the door, and she locked it. And with all my speed and all my momentum, I ran into the door. The door broke off the hinges fell and hit the ground. I knew that when my dad got home, I was gonna be in so much trouble. There was no way I could tell my dad the truth. You see, if you imagine this structure here as the trust that my dad and I had built over time, I was about to begin chipping away at this structure by telling lies. When he came in the door, I said, Dad, you're never gonna believe this. The door to the bathroom fell off the hinges and I have no idea what happened. You see, what I didn't know, Loop, is that my dad already knew the truth. My sister had already told him, and I was breaking down trust that we had built over time. Every single one of us has told a lie. We've all lied before because we felt like it was easier to do. Maybe you put the blame on somebody else and you said they did it, it was their fault. Or maybe you did what I did and you lied after lie after lie after lie and it was a slippery slope, and now you have holes in the foundation of your trust. But did you know that God loves truth, and he wants us to pursue truth as often as possible? Adam and Eve in the garden, they chose to pursue a lie, and they didn't choose truth, and it wasn't the best plan for them. It wasn't pursuing God's plan. God has a plan for every single one of us, and when we chase after truth, we are pursuing that plan. Maybe you've lied before, and maybe you know that it's time you're gonna begin telling the truth. And if you have lied, know this, that our God loves us so much that he offers this thing called forgiveness. And slowly but surely, if we ask for forgiveness, we can begin to repair the holes and rebuild our trust. Loop, I wanna challenge you to tell the truth. It may not always be easy, but it's always worth it. You know what rhymes with lies? Pies. Yep, we've been down this road before.
Bring on the pies. We have the box of pies challenge. Here's how it works. Each mystery box contains a strange pie that you won't find on any menu. On your turn, select the box, open the box, and describe the pie to your opponent. They will guess if you are lying or telling the truth. If the guess is correct, you have to take a bite. If it's wrong, they take a bite. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna come and get that one with the blue fork and the purple spoon. Go for it. Okay. All right, are you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Okay, Jamie, so you can choose to tell me what you actually have in front of you, what the actual pie is, or you can choose to lie. All right, uh, this is a smoked oyster pudding pie. There is whipped cream or whipped cream. There uh, are oysters. It looks like uh, maybe some butter, some melted butter on top. Oh man, that sounds like a pie that we would have on the Loop Show. Or does it? I am going to guess that you are telling the truth, Jamie. Okay, cool. That is just fine. That is just fine. Uh, okay. It's fine. Jamie. Yeah? That, that was good. You told the truth. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, uh, did... oh my. Oh, it is no. squishy. Oh. <laughs> I don't do squishy. I'm going to try to cover this oyster in whipped cream. Oh, but the no. oyster is in there. Please oh. take note of the oyster. <laughs> Yikes. All right, I'm terrified. Oyster bite. Oyster bites. It's squishy. Oh. It's, it's squishy. Oh, it's no. It's squishy. Ugh. Squishy and fishy. Squishy and fishy, oh no. I swallowed it whole. I just swallowed it whole. What? I just swallowed it. Ooh. I just swallowed it. You did it. Oh my gosh. But it still tastes is it horrible. Is, it still tastes okay. like I just swallowed a fish, like a whole fish. I think the you... fact that it is going down my esophagus and into my stomach is totally grossing me out. Oh. <sighs> Good job, Jamie. You did it. I'm gonna go with this one. All right, here we go. I don't know where to begin. This is a gummy worms and cat food. Like, catastrophe pie? Okay. Uh, I'm going to say that you are lying. I did lie. Great. I lied. So it's gummy bears, not gummy worms. Um, uh -huh. There's a difference. Uh, and and spam. All just... <laughs> oh, look at that. It's like someone just threw a handful of everything and they're like, ah, I guess that's, that's a pie. <laughs> that is just whipped cream covered spam. I'm sorry for lying, JB. No, oh, that, that, well, yes. This is what you get for lying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, he's chewing it. He's chewing oh, it. This is a terrible combination. And the gummy, <laughs> the gummy bears are like hard. Oh, it's dripping. It's dripping. And it's gone. Oh. Woohoo! Oh. Good job, Ricky. <laughs> Well, okay, it wouldn't be an episode about integrity if we didn't have really gross pies. And integrity is just another word for honesty. And if you want to see an example of epic integrity, check this out. Joseph lived in the land of Canaan, and he had 11 brothers. Yep. But they really didn't like him. Ah, that's right, because their dad gave Joseph that sweet coat with all the colors. Exactly. Then God gave Joseph some dreams, telling him that he had big plans for his life. Yeah, like the one where the wheat stood up and all the other bundles bowed down to it. And then the one where the sun, the moon, and 11 stars all bowed down to Joseph. You got it. Plus that one dream where he had mouths on his knees. No, that was your dream and it was super weird. Get that out of here. Yeah, sorry. Joseph's brothers were so jealous that they threw him down into a pit. Then they told their dad that he had been killed by a wild animal and sold him off as a slave. Gotcha. So now we're all caught up, okay? What happened next? Well, Joseph was under the control of the slave traders. He was forced to walk for miles and miles in his chains with no idea where he was going. Man, that sounds kind of scary. No kidding. They led Joseph all the way to the land of Egypt. Whoa, like Egypt, Egypt? Like where the pyramids are? You bet. Dag, yo, that's like way far away. It sure was, and that only made things worse. Not only would he be forced to work as a slave, but he was so far away from home. He didn't speak their language and he wasn't used to their food. It was not a great situation. Man, I wish he wasn't so alone like that. Well, he might have felt like he was alone, but he actually wasn't. 
The Bible says that even in this rough situation, the Lord was with him. He never left Joseph, and he still had big plans for his life. Like even in a really bad spot like this? Totally. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Soon after he came to Egypt, he was sold to a man named Potiphar. Wait, what's that guy's name? Pot of fur? Uh, no. Honda bird? No, say it after me. Potiphar. Potty turd. No! Come on, man. That's not even close. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to say potty. Potiphar was a very wealthy man. In fact, he was one of the Pharaoh's officials. Whoa, that's a pretty big deal, huh? Isn't Pharaoh like the leader of all of Egypt? Sure is. So this meant Potiphar had a lot of power and lived in a nice big house. Hey, that's kind of cool, actually. I mean, even though he's a slave, at least he gets to live like in a house and do some cool work indoors, huh? Exactly. That's one way that God took care of Joseph through this whole deal. Gotcha. So that's what you were saying about how no matter the circumstances, God's big plans are still working. Now you're starting to get it. So what happened next? Did he just like live it up working in that sweet mansion, mowing the yard, dusting the statues, cleaning the pool? Not exactly. For a while, everything actually seemed to be going okay. Until something bad happened. Of course it did. Can't have too much good stuff happening for old Joseph, can we? Something's gotta come along and mess it all up. What happened? Did Joseph like make a mistake or something? No, actually Joseph didn't do anything wrong, but Potiphar's wife was not a great person and she lied about Joseph and got him in big trouble. But you said he didn't do anything wrong. How come he got in big trouble? Well, he was still just a lowly slave boy, so Potiphar actually sided with his wife. Oh man, that stinks. So what happened? Did he just like go work for somebody else? Uh, no, actually he got thrown into prison. Wait, what? That double stinks, but he didn't do anything. All right, Joseph, time to lawyer up. Be all like, I'll see you in court, lady. You're trying to lie about me and send me to jail? You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. Okay, calm down. That's not really how it worked back then. If someone like Potiphar wanted you to go to jail, you went to jail. Man, this is all just a big old bologna cram witch with extra bogus sauce and a side of rip off. I know, I know, but remember, even in all those dark times, the Lord was still with Joseph. Wait, I don't, but, but how? His situation keeps getting worse and worse. First, he's thrown into a pit by his jerk brothers. Then he gets sold into slavery. Then he gets lied about by some jerk lady and thrown into a stinking rat infested prison. That's true. His circumstances weren't all that great, but God still had a great, big, awesome plan for his life. And even in the hard times, the Lord was with him. But then something was about to happen that would change things big time. Oh, really? What happened? Well, that's the next part of the story. Oh man, you got me with another to be continued. Never even saw it coming. Man, you're good. So I'm gonna pick another pie. <gasps> okay, I see why this was on your desk. No. This is Ricky's surprise pickle pie. So Jamie? I want to take one for the team. I can eat this for you, Ricky. Jamie? If you want me to. Jamie. Because I don't mind pickles. Jamie, I, I want to trust you. Yeah? And so if I say that you're telling the truth mm -hmm. and you are lying to me, we will be fighting for real, okay? okay. <laughs> I like the voice you're using. <laughs> it is my voice of desperation. Okay, I'm gonna say that you're telling the truth. Okay, I'm lying. So does that mean I win or lose? I can't remember. It means I lose. Okay, great. It's not a bad one. It's oatmeal and taco seasoning crumble pie. That's not horrible. <sighs> I guess this will be fine. So this is oatmeal, taco seasoning, crumble pie. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, it's worse than you expected, huh? Oh, it's very dry. Get your saliva in there. Yeah. Oh, no, it's activating everything. <laughs> oh, no, why is it? Oh, that's so crunchy. Crunchy. And oh, oh. Exactly. Oh, it's like someone combined breakfast and dinner. That was awful. Uh, I guess it's my turn. All right, here we go. Oh, this is kind of sweet. This is just an oil and vinegar pie. The end. I mean, I think you're lying, because why would you say, oh, this is sweet, and then you were like, it's oil and vinegar. What's sweet about oil and vinegar? 
You're lying. Nope, I'm telling you the truth. It what? says go together like oil and vinegar pie. Well, clams. Uh, yeah, I want to cry. Here, here, I want you guys to. <laughs> All right, okay, uh, goodness, I just don't know what's going to happen. Mm. What's that like? Looks like it's sour? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Vinegary? Vinegary. I swallowed it. I, <laughs> ah, it burns. I just have the worst breath ever. I have oyster oh, yeah. and vinegar. Oh, I've got oatmeal taco burps. Hey, I have a question for you. Would you believe me if I told you I haven't eaten any candy today? None. Zero. Zilch. No candy. Okay, so maybe I wasn't honest. So how can we practice honesty? So much of it is what comes out of your mouth. See what I did there? It's the things that we say. We want to be honest. So stop a lie before it comes out of your mouth. If you know a lie is out there, go and catch it and replace it with truth. Respond to cheating with good sportsmanship instead of more cheating. Keep your promises. You have an honor code. Speak truth in love. Speak truth to everybody around you. Be honest to your friends and honest to your family. And when you tell the truth in every situation, people know they can trust you. I wanna be somebody that you can trust. So here's me telling the truth. I did eat some candy today, okay? You can tell it was good. I don't know why I lied about it. There was no reason to lie about it. And this is so important because Jesus calls us to be truth tellers, to be people of our words, to be people that are honest. It honors and pleases him when we're honest. When you tell the truth, not only do people know that they can trust you, but you know that confidently you have nothing to hide. And they're gonna honor your honesty with more responsibility. When you're honest in class and you do honest work, you don't cheat, you tell the truth, your teacher will know that they can trust you that you are a student that they can rely on. God trusts us to be truth tellers, to be honest. And with Christ strengthening your honesty daily, you're ready for anything. Okay, so we have the pies that we didn't select here. So let's take a look. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. This is a baby food surprise pie. Oh. I don't even know if I can lift it up without it going everywhere. This is awful. What, what did you get? Uh, you're not gonna believe me, um, but it's true. I got a roast beef in glitter gravy pie. <laughs> so shiny. <laughs> the glitter would have thrown me off. I would not have believed you. Well, everyone knows what it feels like to tell a lie. And everybody knows what it feels like to be lied to. And I know lying might feel like the easier way to go about life, but it breaks down friendships. So let's be people who are honest in our words and our actions. Let's be people of integrity. And dependable. And always ready to tell the truth. Ready for anything. Ready for anything. Because to be honest. I'm not going to lie. We really want you to, to enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. Oh, we should have said, enjoy the pie. Yeah. Today has been another really great day learning all about produce. Um, I was gonna say the fruit of the spirit, oh. but... Oh, yeah, right, got it, yeah, yeah, the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see you later, church kids. And don't forget, it's a great day... To, to be, be a church, church kid! Yeah, 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 yeah!